So right, there is something definitely very pertinent about sex and marriage that people don't tell you or prepare you for marriage. Well, basically, I don't know who could have prepared me. If I ask you now, how did you learn about sex? What are you going to tell me? I mean, fiscal intimacy. Very few people can say their parents sat them down and taught them, okay, this is what sex is all about and this is what you should expect about it in marriage. It actually feels very weird just imagining me sitting with my parents talking about that because we were not brought up that way, especially here in Africa. And I think it's pretty much much of the way it is all over the world because we've kind of made this topic a taboo. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing uh, so far, yeah, I got married last month and I'm going to be sharing uh, the things I wish I knew before getting married particularly our focus today is sex because yes i know many of you may say it's just a month it's not premature for you to be making a video on all the things you wish you had known because you still have a lot to discover that is true that is true because there is still a lot of things for me to discover and uncover but so far it's actually been pretty much interesting and this video is particularly for those of you who are yet to get married or probably you have been divorced in the past or your marriage is uh struggling then you're going to understand a lot of things which i've been able to understand uh, in one month particularly about sex okay quickly let's get to it someone always said uh, there was this quote that someone says uh, i went into marriage thinking that marriage would solve all my problems but unfortunately for me of course you know what the the, the last line will be it didn't but I can say for myself that I went to marriage thinking it would solve all my problems. And fortunately for me, it did. Yes, marriage did solve all my problems. I'll tell you more on that later. So going back to our topic, physical intimacy in marriage. Uh, how can I put it? I can use an illustration. I want you to think of this, our friend Freddy. Freddy lives in a hunger-stricken land. And Freddy hears of this place, we can call it the promised land, that has excess and abundance of food you know there's so much food people can eat as much as they want and freddy has to struggle to dig termites from the ground or just pick whatever he can find to eat and so freddy learns that there is a pathway you can follow to get to the promised land where you have abundance of food at will but at the same time also there is mr wicked mr evil that is offering freddy a shortcut to get a few plates of food now and forsake having to go through the long winding pathway of finally getting to the promised land and so they send you yes you watching this as an ambassador to go and help freddy follow the pathway and get to the promised land and so when you meet freddy freddy is all like whoa i heard you're from the promised land i heard there's so much food there you know what i'm i'm pretty sure you guys just eat every second like you wake up in the morning you're biting chicken you're eating pork you're eating steak you're eating beef you're eating hamburgers you're eating pizza you're biting and biting and biting and biting and eating you're constantly eating. I mean, if I get to the promised land with all this hunger I've known my entire life, that is exactly what I'm going to be doing day in, day out. And then you're like, whoa, 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 Freddy, slow down. I don't think that's how it works there. I mean, you are not accounting for something. Your stomach has a limited capacity and you can only eat so much. And if you try to eat beyond what your capacity can take, you end up hitting the food and you probably don't want to see food for several days but fred is like no 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 i don't believe that i when i get there i'll be eating morning afternoon evening in between every second every hour there'll be something in my mouth i'll be chewing of course you look at fred and you're like well it's normal because of where he's coming from he hasn't really appreciated yet the fact that when we talk of appetite we talk of also satiety it means you can get full you can get satisfied and you have to wait for the next time of course there are two scenarios if freddy does make it to the promised land the right way he would get shocked that whoa he can only eat so much and he has to wait to eat again and probably after some time he will feel like he doesn't even want to eat any of those delicacies again for a long while that's option one but if he made the mistake to fall for mr wicked's offer of breaking his principles and getting a few plates of food he would have eaten just one plate and realized he was deceived it was a waste of time so brave i'm sure if you listen to the story now you understand that i am freddy and the promised land is marriage the excess food is sex and uh, mr evil's offer is fornication i was how can i say blessed and uh, by god's grace able to keep myself to marriage and what i can say is getting there i realized that 
uh, Mr. Evil's offer would have been the biggest disappointment and the biggest trap, you know, forfeiting your vision, forfeiting your potentials, your gifts, and probably even getting a detour from your purpose for something which really is just overrated and overhyped by the media in the world we are living in. So if you're watching this now and you're not yet married, then you have to understand that sex is something that has been overhyped by the media and you may go into marriage if you go into marriage with the mindset of what they portray it to be you know this kind of thing which uh, it can only be good and you always want it at all time that actually is lost and lost is different from love because loss is difficult to satisfy lost is difficult to fulfill and loss is impatient and always wants more but then it doesn't satisfy neither does it fulfill but in marriage once you get to marry someone you love and you're in love you realize that the stakes are completely different now one of the challenges it could be for people is that they realize that somehow it's like they been duped you know there are many people who get into marriage why for one reason and that is sex and that was your main motivation for getting married and so when they get there and they have it once twice and then they are full and they kind of even have it a lot and then they even hate it for some days and then there's nothing else to keep them in the marriage or to keep them busy they don't connect with your partner solely Kali. they don't share the same visions they don't share the same passions they have nothing in common to discuss and laugh about they are not really friends friends first you can you have to be friends first because you're going to be spending a lot of time together then they realize that it's somehow they have been caught up in a prison so why would you go through all that procedures just so that you can have sex now that's that's kind of crazy right people need to understand our young people like the people i'm sent to to speak to through this video uh you need to understand that as far as sex is concerned you're being deceived you're being lied to and you're being overrated just like you see food as something normal that the day you'll be hungry you eat and you cannot only eat so much that's how you should perceive you know the excess food in the promised land and uh, tell freddy to calm down because uh, he's actually not losing anything as far as he's still alive he's not dying no matter what he's struggling with right now he's still going to make it to the promised land if he follows the path you know forfeiting his gifts and potentials and purposes to take a quick offer of a few plates he's only going to realize and regret that it definitely wasn't worth all of that okay moving a little bit from sex and talking about the statement i made earlier that i went into marriage thinking it was going to solve all my problems and fortunately for me actually did you may be surprised but the secret is i didn't go into marriage with any problem so if i didn't go in there with any problem hoping it will solve it then technically when i went there all my problems were solved because they were already solved before i went there not because i took problems in there of course you can still make a good argument and say well you're still just very young and you know things will get tough once you've made a year or two or five years you realize that it gets boring and all of that but uh, that's not really the point here because uh, what I'm talking about here are principles I'm not really talking about experience when you say that you're talking about your experience and one of the biggest challenges today is that people go around taking people's experiences in marriage as gospel instead of taking principles before I was married I taught people on married I counseled married couples and one thing I realized is that if you teach principles you never go wrong but if you teach experience you're always bound to make a mistake because every marriage is different every couple is different from another but principles are standard and they apply everywhere a simple example of a principle is forgiveness okay you can teach couples and say forgive one another now experience you can teach experience by saying if you find out that you've offended your partner go to them immediately and apologize and ask for forgiveness that could work for couple a where the person wants to know that you're repentant immediately but there are other people who once you've offended them they need time to process you're probably familiar with people like that they don't want you to talk to them they want you to give them their space out of respect they can process the hurt you have uh, inflicted on them and once you have processed that for an hour or a couple of hours and they are calm that is when you can come down and apologize and they are going to receive and accept your apology without which if you come immediately apologizing to them it may seem like you're just 
turning the knife in the wound so you see that's the difference between a principle of forgiveness and experience of how to go about it so if you teach principles and like we're talking about and we're always talking on this channel you can't go wrong now your experiences may not reflect or be so much but that's not really the point we we are not really here i won't say we don't care about your experiences but we can take your experiences as gospel we take principles principles from god's word principles from the 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 the, the founder of marriage himself as gospel truth not people's experiences so yes the road is still long ahead forever it's a long way to go and uh of course i expect challenges i'm definitely going to still have to deal with in-laws along the line and you know family and a lot of other things no kids coming in and all of that yes it promises to have a lot of fun challenges to throw at us but with principles you're guaranteed that there is nothing new or strange that is going to come your way but that you cannot handle because god has already given you the blueprints through his principles to handle that so if you're listening to this and you're divorced or you're having a difficult marriage then i want you to check what you've been applying have you been applying people's advices and based on experience or you've been applying principles because you can't go wrong applying principles principles are forgive principles are pray for your partner experiences are this is what i did and it worked for me you also go and try it no don't do that it could work it may work but that is not the standard that shouldn't be your example if you're watching this and you're not married remember prepare yourself so that marriage will actually solve all your problems why because you won't take any problems in there expecting it to be solved to, to begin with and secondly calm down slow down you know you really are not missing in anything you know it's like someone telling you uh, you have never eaten these then you have missed your whole life because that's how the media portrays uh, physical intimacy today but you very well know that there is really nothing that you're missing out of your life because you have not eaten it the day you get to find it you eat it so the day you get to be married legally and you have full access to that intimacy that god has created for married couples you're going to enjoy it but obviously just like any other appetite you're going to be satisfied you're going to come to satiety and you're probably even going to dislike it for a couple of times or you're going to get used to it so the point is don't get carried away don't take mr evil's offer to go astray for a few seconds or minutes of pleasure which you're still going to regret immediately after but you can keep yourself you can prepare yourself and you're surely going to have the best experience of marriage in the future so that's it for this video you know the one thing i wish i had known before getting married and that was it about physical intimacy uh i guess it goes without saying that you should expect more of these kind of videos maybe let's wait a year and see other things we're going to learn but you know i already read a book like things i wish i knew about marriage by gary chapman if there is a book you haven't read you should read it when i talk of preparation those are the kind of books i read to already anticipate what is coming and adapt to it so the moment i got in there weren't so many things to destabilize me I'm Bodas Jumeci from Wisdom for Dominion. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you're married, what was the one thing that you wish you had known before getting married? On whatever topic it was, I'll be so happy to learn from you and others, I think, too. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss our next video. A big shout out to our patrons. It's thanks to your support that we can keep creating content like this. You too can support this channel. The link is in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. And on until the next one, remain blessed.